our women with respect to their health. Now, there's some other aspects of graphene. Also, what when you have an injury, like you see basketball players and they get hurt and they're told to put some heat on, okay, to, to make things feel better. What you're doing is, or you have a heating pad on your abdomen, what you're doing is you're opening up blood vessels, okay? Heat causes vasodilatation. This is why the sun, okay, okay, your face is flush, okay? Heat causes vasodilatation, causes your blood vessels to dilate. Where is oxygen? Oxygen is in the blood. And so if oxygen is in the blood and you're opening up the blood vessels, you are allowing more oxygen to get to tissues. And if more oxygen gets to tissues, guess what? The tissues are healthier. This is why you hear about people going into these hyperbaric chambers and, and sucking up all this oxygen, okay, to make them feel better, okay? Well, the pad is going to allow that heat, okay, from the graphene. Now, we're not talking about heat that is perceptible. We're talking about heat at a level, an atomic level, okay, to cause the blood vessels to dilate, to allow oxygen to get to the tissues to help them heal faster, which would do what? It's gonna cut down the menstrual cramps. It's gonna cut down the length of the cycle because what did I say in the other session? I said a cycle is nothing more then the lining leaving and the lining repairing. Well, if I have a process that can speed up that healing, well, then my cycle is going to be less. Okay, I'm going to have less bleeding. I'm going to have less cramping. And so graphene is going to be working in that mode to help with the healing of the uterus. Okay, and the healing of any excessive bacteria that could be in the vagina from the cycle. Because when that blood comes down through the cycle, the bacteria that's there, even though it's good bacteria, it's still gonna grow rapidly, okay? And I'm gonna spend a moment, I'm gonna kinda of take it aside to address tampons, because this is a perfect time to address tampons. And why tampons are so unsafe. First of all, they're not natural. They're not natural. The, the body wasn't made to have something up in there stopping what is naturally supposed to be coming out. When you think about us as part of the animal kingdom, I know this is gonna sound kind of crazy, but you know what the animal, okay, has anything like that going on with them, okay? And when you think about the orifices of the body, when you think about it, every orifice in your body is there for a reason. Everyone, it wasn't there accidentally. It was there for a purpose, okay? When you have a bowel movement, nothing's supposed to stop that from coming out. So when you're bleeding, why should it be something to stop it from coming out? It is supposed to come out. The reason people use tampons, okay, wasn't because they really wanted to, is because the pads were so inefficient and they wanted something to help with all the blood that was coming out. And unfortunately, because African-American women, okay, by statistics, by statistics, have a greater incidence of fibroid tumors, we're going to have a greater incidence of vaginal bleeding at the time of our cycle. So you can only imagine a woman who's having a lot of bleeding and is not getting a satisfactory result with a pad would feel the necessity, not the desire, but the necessity to put a tampon in the vagina. But we know that that tampon, again, not only the, the chemicals, the dioxin, well, let's take it even another level. But I was talking about the bacteria. Okay, the bacteria is now sitting on that pad. Okay, it's sitting there. Normally, it would come on out. But now, it's lodged in. That pad is full of blood. It's like a smorgasbord. Okay, it's like Thanksgiving. Okay, that bacteria is growing and growing and growing. And guess what? Where is it going? It has to go somewhere. It has to go somewhere. And so, two places. It can either continue to go into the tampon, or it can go into the vaginal wall, or it can go both. And when it goes into the vaginal wall, it gets into the bloodstream, and now you have a toxic condition again. Remember what I said. Bacteria produce their own toxins. And 
in those cases where it is excessive, that's when you get toxic shock syndrome, okay? Because the body isn't able to get rid of the toxins from the bacteria that have been produced by the bacteria growing in such rapid numbers while sitting on that tampon. Mm -hmm. So that is why we will never have tampons because it would, it would actually go against what we feel we're trying to accomplish in promoting health for women, not bad health, not unsafe health, not destruction. And so a tampon is something that no woman should use. Now, I get questions all the time as a gynecologist from, from mothers who tell me their daughters dance or their daughter, and I say, and I understand, or they're swimmers, and here's my answer to that. I mean, I, got, I have to be practical. If you have to use them, then replace them every time you think about it, okay? Because as that bacteria is pulling out, don't allow that bacteria to grow on them to then go into the vaginal wall. So there are going to be, I mean, not everyone is going to use pads. We know this. People are going to use. So at least from, from, from a physician's standpoint, if you have to use them, replace them often, often. And the reason why that one, tam, the one tampon got the bad name and caused and was the main culprit for toxic shock syndrome is because it was too good. The woman could put that tampon and that tampon soaked up all her blood for the entire day. Okay, and so for her, it was great, but for the bacteria, it was Christmas. Okay, and then for her health, it was deadly. Okay, so, so as far as tampons, no, we, we, will, we will never have tampons. But graphene is the, the future. And graphene is something that is going to really benefit. And we will have the only pads in North America, in North America, okay, with that technology. The only, I'm a member of a few organizations associated with graphene. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the people who's written the book, the graphene handbook, um, he's out of Israel and I've been emailing him. And he, who has written a book, Graphene Handbook, isn't aware of all that technology with the sanitary now. He, he has heard about it, but he couldn't, he, I was, because I was actually, you know, we were sending emails back and forth, I wanted some info, you know, and he said, I, 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 I can't tell you anything, okay? Uh, and I asked him, was he gonna be at the American Summit? And he said he couldn't, because he just came from another summit, but we are communicating, okay? Because I want him to know about us. I want everyone to know about us because we care about us. And the more people understand it, okay, what's this say? This form of flattery is imitation, okay? Let me tell you something. About five, five, five six months ago, I went into one of the, the pharmacies and I picked up uh, a pack of um, um, sanitary napkins just to see what was on the label. And it was interesting that, and I, I, again, I'm not gonna mention companies, either, but it was interesting how on the label it said non-chlorination non process. That wasn't on there before our, before our group got together. It wasn't on there, okay? What I'm saying is we're making people aware Okay, even if the FDA doesn't want to make people aware, we are making people aware. And these companies know, and these companies have to understand that the women of yesterday are not the women of today, and definitely will not be the women of tomorrow. Okay, and we see it just in the Congress that we now have the 116th Congress, okay, the number of women, the diversity of the women. Women are now, not they weren't before, but now they have the support to further their goals and desires, where they've always had the interest, 
desire, but they had no support. And now that support is there. So I'm so happy that this, this pad is out and is going to benefit 